Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. A few weeks ago, we covered how to set up a basic but very functional alarm system using Home Assistant, where we covered how to install our alarm, the hardware required, and then how to tie it all together inside of Home Assistant to give you a really nice, locally controlled and privacy focused smart home alarm system. Well, today we are circling back to cover four more advanced things that I like to do with my own alarm system to take it to the next level in terms of functionality, but also security. From multi-user support on keypads, a silent panic mode, a panic button, and quick NFC control. Let's get into it. In this video, we're going to be using Alarmo, which we are using as the basis for our alarm inside of Home Assistant, which we installed and set up the basics for in the previous video. So if you haven't yet set up Alarmo first, then make sure to go ahead and follow that video and then come back to this one to follow along. The first thing I wanted to show you is how to integrate a keypad with Alarmo. So in the previous video, I mentioned that I use a Zigbee keypad to disarm the alarm when I come in. So I walk in up to the door, the alarm starts the countdown, and then I punch the code in on this keypad and it will disable. But there is two challenges with this. Firstly, Zigbee keypads will show up as their own alarm entity inside of Home Assistant, meaning that you'll have to keep them in sync with the Alarmo entity and then secondly, ZHA does have support for keypad codes, which is great, but this only works if you have one code that your entire household uses. If you want to have a code for each person so you know who disabled it, or you want to do fancy things like a panic code, then we need to find an alternative way, which is what I have done here and which is what I will show you. The basic premise for the second problem is essentially we will create an automation where we will listen to the Zigbee event data that is coming from the keypad, collect the code that was entered, and then send that code to Alarmo via a disarm action. Alarmo will then either disarm if the code matches a code it recognizes, or do nothing if it isn't. Now, it's worth mentioning that I am obviously using a Zigbee keypad for this, which I know is quite expensive, but if you can integrate another keypad using something like Z-Wave or Bluetooth, and you can read those codes inside of Home Assistant somehow, then you should be able to follow along with a similar idea. For some reason, there is a real shortage of Zigbee keypads at the moment, with not many out there available, but yeah, any keypad that you can read codes from should work. First, head over into Alarmo and set up a disarm code for each person you have in your house. These will need to be different and unique code for each person for this to work. Once you have your code set up, let's head over to developer tools and then event data. And I'm going to enter ZHA underscore event in the listen box and start listening for those events. You'll see that if I enter a code on my keypad and hit the disarm button, that we will get an event come through that contains a bunch of information. You're going to want to copy the command and argument section of this event only as shown, and then go over to settings, automations, and create a new automation. Then as the trigger, select event as the type and enter ZHA underscore event once again into the event type box. In the event data box, paste in the event data that we just captured a few seconds ago. We need to get rid of any extra information that we don't need here, so remove the arm mode, code, and zone ID from the box, making sure to clean up your indentation if required. You may be wondering why we are removing the code from the event data, since we will probably want to use it. The reason is that if we leave the code in here, that will make the automation only run on that one specific code, but we want Alarmo to decide if the code is right or not. So by doing it this way, the automation will always run regardless of the code entered. All you should have left is the command and arm mode description in your event data. You can test if this is correct by going ahead and entering a code into your keypad and pressing the disarm button. And you should see a little blue message appear to tell you that the automation was triggered. Next under the action section, we're going to select call service from the dropdown and select the Alarmo disarm service. As the entity, select your Alarmo entity. And then at this point, we need to switch over to YAML only since what we are about to enter is not supported in the UI. So click the three dots and change over to YAML mode. On the next line under entity ID, add code followed by a colon and then enter the following template shown. 
What this little bit of magic does is basically takes the code that was entered in the keypad and captured in the event data and then passes it into the service for Alarmo. This actually took a surprisingly long time to figure out as this little bit isn't really documented anywhere that I could see, but it's pretty straightforward once you have it. Make sure indentation is once again set correctly, hit save and that's actually all there is to the keypad automation. Figuring out that template is the real key that you need. So once saved, go ahead and set your alarm and then try to disable it with the keypad and verify everything works as intended. You can then head over to the Alarmo panel and over to Actions and add a new notification. I like to add a text-to-speech notification on the house speakers to announce who disabled the alarm with a custom greeting. Select Alarm is disarmed as the event and then select the text-to-speech service as the target and then select a speaker you want to play the message on. If you want to play it on multiple speakers, then you will want to create a media group first. Finally, enter the message you want to be spoken using the changed by wildcard at the bottom to speak the name of the person who disabled it. Then give the notification a name and you are now done. Welcome home, Wayne Kerr. Speaking of alarms actually, I do need to alert you of today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you are creating or selling anything online these days, then you definitely need a website. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it so incredibly easy for anyone to build their own website in no time at all without any coding. You can choose from one of their stunning templates to get you started and then customize everything using the super intuitive drag and drop style interface to get your website looking just all websites are automatically optimized for desktop and mobile to give the best user experience possible, and all sites come with 24 seven award-winning support if you ever need it. So no matter if you're creating guides and tutorials, podcasts, newsletters, or even selling a product, Squarespace is the perfect platform to create a beautiful website and online presence in no time. So you can get back to doing what you do best, creating. Check out Squarespace for a free trial and then when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash everythingsmarthome to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code everythingsmarthome. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. The second automation I wanted to show you and another thing our previous work actually sets us up nicely for is a panic or silent alarm. So picture a scenario where you are forced to disable the house alarm. So you enter a specific code into the keypad, which will seem like it disabled the alarm on the surface, but in the background, it will automatically trigger a separate routine and then maybe a silent notification to other family members to let them know someone is in trouble. The steps we have taken so far actually set us up really nicely for this since we have done the legwork already, although it's worth mentioning that this will work whether you are using a physical keypad like the one I have or you're using the Alarmo keypad on a tablet or mobile dashboard. Simply head over to Alarmo and create a new user with a new code and give this one a different name. You can use the word panic here, which is what I'm going to do for just for this demo, but you may want to use a fake name or alias instead because you don't want your speaker to suddenly read out the word panic, which I'm guessing would probably tip them off. So just something to be aware of there. Once you've created your panic user, we are going to go over to developer tools and find the Alarmo entity. If you now set the alarm and disable it with your keypad, you will see in the attribute column that there is a value called changed by. This is perfect for what we need as we can set up an automation that looks for our panic user in this field. Head to settings, automations and create a new automation. From the trigger dropdown, select state as the type and then select Alarmo as your entity. Then select changed by from the attribute box and then in the to box, enter the name of your user exactly as it appeared before in developer tools, making sure to get the case correct. Then all we need to do is enter an action depending on what we want to do. I'm going to go ahead and just send a basic notification here, but feel free to enter whatever you would like to in the actions. Could be sending a notification to an external party through email or text service or something similar. And now if you set the alarm and then enter your panic code into the keypad, 
You should see that the alarm disables on the surface and then all of your panic actions will immediately kick in. The third thing I wanted to show you how to do is to create a simple panic button or buttons that you could have strategically placed throughout your house using something like the Akara wireless mini switch, which has a single double and hold action or a single double, triple and quad button press depending on the version. Now, since this remote may be used for other functions like controlling light switches, I like to set up a bit more of a failsafe just to make sure that it is definitely intentional anytime the panic mode gets triggered. Firstly, head over to automations and create a new automation. For the trigger, this time we are going to select a device from the dropdown and then select our panic remote. Then select the action you want to do from the list. In my case, it is a double press. Then in the action section, we are going to select a wait for trigger. Enter 10 seconds in the timeout and make sure to disable the continue on timeout option as we do not want this action to run if the double press is only hit once. Then hit the trigger button once again and select device, choose the panic remote once again and then select the action. So again, I'm going to select double press. Then go ahead and enter the sequence of events you want to occur when the panic mode is run. Again, I'm just using a notification for this example, but you can go ahead and enter whatever you would like. What this automation does is run anytime a double press is hit on the remote, but it's then going to wait for a second double press before actually running the automation. So to effectively trigger the panic mode, you double press, wait one second, and then double press again before it will actually run the actions and run properly. The timeout means that you have 10 seconds to do the second double press and if you don't, the automation won't do anything else. This means that in theory it should never be accidentally triggered and you should be really sure you actually want to trigger the panic mode. You can of course add another wait for trigger to be triple sure as well as the reduce the wait time if you want to. The fourth and final thing I wanted to show you was how to use NFC tags to disarm and arm your alarm. NFC tags are these tiny little discs or keyrings that you can scan with your phone and have different things happen depending on which one was scanned. They are great because they don't have any batteries. They are super small, so basically just program them and put them wherever you want and forget about them. So you may want to have one by your front door for disarming when you come home and then maybe one in your car for alarming or arming the alarm when you leave for the day. You'll obviously need to have NFC tags for this to work, but they are very inexpensive. SwitchWatt has a pack of 10 of these for a few pounds, which work well with Home Assistant and are super slim and small. I'll have them linked down in the description, but you should be able to use any that is compatible with your phone. Once you have your tags, open up the Home Assistant companion app, head over to settings, click tags and hit the add tag button. Give your first tag a name like disarm alarm, scan the tag and then repeat and add a second tag for arm alarm. Next head over to settings, automations and create a new automation. We are going to combine both tags into one single automation. So add a trigger and this time from the dropdown select the tag option. Then select the disarm tag from the dropdown and hit the three dots in the corner and choose edit ID. Give your trigger a unique ID, which we will then use later. Then add another trigger and this time add your arm tag instead, again adding a unique ID for that trigger. Then in the actions, select choose as the type from the dropdown and then for option one, add a condition and select triggered by. Select disarm as the trigger and then for the action, select call service and select the Alarmo disarm service. Select Alarmo as the entity ID and then enter your disarm code if you are required to enter a code for disarm. You may consider setting up a separate user and a pin code just for NFC tags if you want to. Then for the second option, we pretty much do the exact same, except this time we add a triggered by condition and we select arm as the triggered ID. And for the action, we select the Alarmo arm action. Select Alarmo as the entity ID, enter a code if required and hit save. Now you can test out scanning both NFC tags and make sure your alarm arms and disarms as expected. 
And there we go, there is four advanced automations you can create to take your DIY alarm system to the next level with multi-user support for keypads, a silent panic disarm, a panic button, and finally arm and disarm actions with cheap NFC tags. These are pretty much all of the things I do with my own alarm system. And now you can hopefully implement these into your smart home alarm system too. Let me know down in the comments if there is anything I haven't yet covered that you do with your alarm or that you'd like to see me cover. Perhaps I haven't even thought of it yet. And maybe we will do a part three if there is enough. Anyways, I hope you did in fact enjoy this video. Please make sure to drop this video a like if you did in fact enjoy it and get subscribed while you are down there if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.